there's probably nothing like petting a pooch or cuddling up with a playful pup. Some say it can be truly therapeutic. They are commonly called man's best and most faithful friends. Plus, they come in a wide range of shapes and sizes, from tiny to tremendous. We'll discover the diverse world of dogs on this week's episode of FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. You got it. Hello, 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 and welcome to this, another exciting edition of FYI for your English, the show where we delve into a different topic every week. And this week, in case you haven't figured it out yet, we're going to take a look at man's best friend. And when I say man, I mean woman too. I should say humankind's best friend. And even if you don't have dogs, we've all loved to look at puppies and pet dogs and, well, nobody likes when they jump up on you. But let's be honest, there are some things about puppies and dogs in general that humans find irresistible. And I thought it was only fair that if we looked at cats, we would also have to look at dogs too. And many of you who know me know that I'm more of a dog person than a cat person, which is why I chose cats first. I wanted to be challenged. I wanted somebody to convince me that cats were worth it. Que valían la pena. Well, at least as much as dogs. And that someone was Suzanne. So a nice shout out to our friend and patron, Suzanne, who is one of the greatest English teachers I know. And if you haven't heard that episode on cats, it is brilliant. Well, at least Suzanne's part. I can't speak of my own part, but I can, I can speak for Suzanne and say she sounds great. What a, what a beautiful speaker, lovely speaking voice. And you want to know the craziest part? Suzanne doesn't believe it herself. So why don't you guys do that? If you haven't heard it, maybe you've heard it already. If not, re-listen to it. It's the episode on cats. And if you like it, send Suzanne a message. On Twitter, she's English Smarts. And I'm sure you'll make her day. As always, we're going to take a look at the intro now because there's tons of vocabulary to look at. Now, it started out with some panting. <laughs> That's right. I think you say jadear. When dogs are out of breath, they pant. It's a little bit different because we don't really use it with humans very often. It's a word that we associate with dogs. And now that you know the word pants... Well, maybe you'll know or get this joke that I'm about to tell you. How do you know that a dog is cold? Because he has a coat and pants. <laughs> do you get it? No? I just explained pants. So he has a coat. Uh, coat es un abrigo, pero también es pelaje. And pants no es pantalones en este caso, sino el verbo pant en tercera persona. So do you get it now? How do you know when a dog is cold? He has a coat and pants. <laughs> All right, I promise I won't tell too many more bad jokes throughout the course of the show. I started off by saying there's probably nothing like petting a pooch. And this is a really cool word because we pet a pet. Eso es, acariciamos una mascota. It's easy to remember. And the word pooch? What is a pooch? Well, a pooch is a loving way to say a dog. Then I said, we love to cuddle up. To cuddle up is acucurrarse, I think you say in Spanish. It means to get close and to touch each other. It's what you do with your family when you watch TV or with your girlfriend or your significant other. You cuddle up. But this time, 
I'm talking about cuddling up with a playful pup. And the word playful is jugueton. And the word pup is short for the word puppy, which is cachorro. And remember, it's pronounced puppy, not Poopy. Uh, will somebody please remind my wife of that? She had a, a very embarrassing story, which I'm, I'm sure I've told you about before. And if I haven't told you about it, well, maybe I'll tell you about it a little bit later on in the episode. Because, well, we've got a lot of stuff to cover today. Then I said, some say it can be truly therapeutic. And I think you can figure out what this word means. Therapeutic. That's right. People say that. There have been studies that show that having a dog can help you if you're sad, if you're lonely, depressed, and even if you have a physical ailment. And we'll talk a little bit about the, the therapeutic aspect a little bit later on, too. Then I said, they are commonly called man's best friend and most faithful friends. Plus, they come in a wide range of shapes and sizes. So the word faithful that I said is fiel. And plus is además. Si te fijas es plus, ¿no? Como canal plus. In fact, that's the, that's the symbol we use when we say dos más dos. Two plus two. But we use it in conversation when adding something. So you could say in addition or plus they come in a wide range, una amplia gama of shapes and sizes, de eh, formas y de tamaños, from tiny, and tiny is muy, 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 muy pequeño, to tremendous. And then you heard the sound of a bark, dog's bark. Uh, you say ladrar in Spanish. And my daughter knows that one. She says, the dog is barking. A fijaos que mi hija no usa la G, como buena americana omite esa G. The dog is barking, and the ducks are quacking. Yo, yo me parto. But in the end, what is she doing, guys? My daughter is imitating what she hears, and she has never heard her daddy say cooking, walking, because we don't. We say walking, cooking. And then I wrapped up by saying, we'll discover the diverse world of dogs on this week's episode of FYI. That's right, the diverse world of dogs. So, what's the answer to the question? Who wins? Cats or dogs? I know you're thinking that right now. And I'm going to try and be unbiased. No sesgado. I'm going to try and just look at the figures and read them to you, and we'll see who rules the animal kingdom. Well, as far as pets are concerned, I think lions would be the rulers of the animal kingdom. But you'll be surprised. People have had some weird pets. They've found alligators, caimanes, in people's Manhattan apartments, which, in my opinion, I don't think that's a good idea. I think wild animals should stay in the wild. Now, cats, dogs, these kind of animals, they've been domesticated, so that's a different story. Well, before we look at the statistics, let's start out by saying that pet ownership, this is owning a pet in the United States, has risen steadily and steadily as constantemente in recent decades. They say a higher percentage of households own pets today compared to 40 years ago. And it's evident. We love our pets in the United States. And in the bonus part, I'm going to tell you guys all about my pets that I've had in my life and my experiences with dogs as well. But let's just put it this way. My mom is one of those people that goes overboard. Se pasa tres pueblos. I mean, okay, she's not as bad as Paris Hilton, you know, carrying the dog around in a Gucci bag. But my mom, you know, she made sure that our dog was well-groomed, you know, that they cut his nails and his hair, and that he even had his pet insurance. So yes, he had an insurance policy and, of course, regular visits to the vet. I mean, why not? These little buggers deserve it. They say that 67% of American households 
own at least one kind of pet. And who's the winner? Did you guys guess already? Did you say dogs? Did you say cats? Well, both guesses are wrong. It's freshwater aquarium fish. It is the undisputed champion of pets in the United States. But second on our list is... Let's get a drum roll over here. Dogs are the clear winner, my amigos. 53% of American households own dogs, and that is roughly 63.4 million. Cats come in third place with 35.7% of households owning a cat, and that is 42.7 million. So again, dogs, 63.4 million households own a dog and 42.7 million own a cat. Now, those numbers are astronomical, however you slice it or dice it. Pongas como lo pongas. We love pets and pets are here to stay. But we're going to focus primarily on dogs today. So what are the pros and cons of getting a dog? Because sure, dogs are cute, they're funny, they're great for Instagram pictures, right? <laughs> if you're an influencer, in fact, there are dogs like Doug the Pug that has millions of followers on Instagram. And the word pug is Carlino. I'm very familiar with this breed. The word breed is raza. Well, let's start off by looking at the pros, some of the advantages of having a dog. And I can tell you all of these from my personal experience. Now, the first one is they are loyal. A dog will give you unconditional love. It doesn't care what you look like. If your clothes don't match, it is going to come up and lick you and kiss you and be so happy to see you when you walk in the door. In fact, I don't think my daughter, my mother, or anybody, my wife, has ever greeted me the way my dog, Simon, greets me when I walk in the door. It is the ultimate display of love. When you see them wagging their tail, y cuidado con esto, we don't say to move their tail, we say they wag their tail. So, unconditional love, who doesn't like that? Another pro, which I mentioned before in the intro, is that you can snuggle up. This is a synonym for cuddle up. Eso es, podéis ver una peli juntos with your favorite blanket. And dogs like scratches. They love when you scratch their belly, cuando le rascas la tripa. And it's therapeutic. It's good for the dog, and it's good for you as well. And I saw this firsthand. How did I see this firsthand? Well, a friend of mine, when I was in college, her mother was suffering and still suffers from MS, multiple sclerosis. And we got her a dog. And we adopted a dog and we decided that we would keep the dog at her mom's house and we would help her mom take care of the dog because the mom couldn't get around easily. And I saw an instant change. I mean, instantly, this woman had a reason to get out of bed, had a reason to go to the kitchen and, and move, even though it was really tough for her. And it's like something changed. Her eyes lit up, and it gave her a sense of purpose. It gave her a companion. So I know that dogs can help you. They can help elderly people. They can help sick people. And they can help people who just need a little companionship. I've seen this firsthand. It was miraculous, to say the least. Another thing is for those of you who are looking to stay in shape, well, think about it. If you've got to walk a dog two or three times a day, 
you're probably doing three or four kilometers and you're not even realizing it. So you can get some exercise, get some fresh air, and at the same time, you're taking the dog out to do their business. And even in the winter, when I know it can be tough and you're thinking it's cold, it's, it's snowing outside, well, that dog still has to go out. And I guess that's one of the, the cons as well, right? Taking the dog out can be a pro or a con. Another pro is that dogs can sense danger and they are very protective of their territory. As we say, they're territorial. They're protective of their territory and of their owners, sus dueños as well. And then the social aspect. Huh? The social aspect? Well, I remember in New York when we had Monique, Monique was a mini pincher, it was a great way to meet other people, especially other dog owners and non-dog owners. I mean, every time I walked around the block with Monique, with this mini pincher, I was meeting girls. I was making friends. And so it's a great way. It's a what we would call an icebreaker because normally people don't come up to you and talk to you in New York. Unless you have an extremely cute dog in tow. And in tow es que lo llevas encima o contigo. Now, I'm sure you guys can think about uh, a lot of other pros, a lot of other reasons to have a dog. But as always on this show, I like to be fair. So let's look at some of the cons. And you know what? Before considering getting a pet, these are things that you should really think about. How many times have people gotten pets and then realized that they got in over their heads? Um, comprometieron demasiado. Um, no estaban listos para esa responsabilidad. They got in over their head. And at that point, it's too late. Because then what do you do? You abandon the dog? You give it up for adoption? So it's better to think about these things beforehand. And let's call a spade a spade. Las cosas como son. Dogs are time consuming. They eat up your time. You got to get up earlier to go take them for a walk. Uh, they're also a financial responsibility. It's costly. Dog food is not cheap. Going to the vet is not cheap, right? All of these things, they have their price. Another thing, too, is allergies. Okay, you might not be allergic to dogs or dander, as we say, danderous, específicamente esa alergia, ese pelo, that dander. But many people you know might be allergic. So maybe people that are friends of yours can't come visit you at your house because they have a terrible allergic reaction. Hey, it doesn't have to happen, but it's something to take into consideration. And one of the things I've noticed that changed when we got Simon, we adopted Simon, was making plans. Now your plans changed. You couldn't just say, okay, we're going to go to Vigo for the weekend. All right, and that little guy who's depending on you to feed him and to take care of him, so in that case, you need what we call a dog sitter. Claro, si cuidas de bebés, you're a babysitter. If you take care of dogs, you're a dog sitter. If you take care of cats, eso es, you're a cat sitter. So you need not just a sitter, but somebody you can trust. And we're very lucky in my case because we have my mother-in-law. And, well, Simon, my dog, loves her more than he loves me, which is understandable. Who doesn't love their grandma more than their parents? Grandparents rock. So in general, you know, making plans, traveling, it, it can be tough. And, and more and more now you can travel with your dogs. But again, then that's just more arrangements that you have to make with the hotel, with the airline. So it, it, it makes things a bit more complicated. Let's be honest. And last but not least, <laughs> they are messy animals. <laughs> I always call my, my mother-in-law's pugs pigs. Porque son más como cerditos. I know. I know that they said that dogs really come from wolves. But when you see a pug walking around and they're like going... 
we, all those no, you're like really I, I don't i don't see a wolf there i see more of a um, a pig <laughs> you know so uh they, they're messy animals not all dogs are messy but uh, even dogs that are house trained okay let's say your dog is house trained house trained is que sabe que no tiene que ir al baño en la casa Okay, but even then, dogs like to, you know, look through the garbage and they like to, you know, sometimes tear up the sofa because they think the sofa is a toy. So dogs can be messy. They can make quite a mess and that's them being house trained. If you're trying to house train a dog, get ready to be cleaning up doggy do. Doggy do is una forma de decir caquita de perro. So what do you think, guys? You thinking about getting a dog now after hearing the pros and cons? Well, in my opinion, the pros outweigh the cons. Sobrepesan, decimos in English. But I will say this, guys. If you are going to get a dog or a cat or any pet, please adopt. There are many shelters that are full of beautiful animals just looking for a home. And they've done some research into the industry of pet shops and, you know, these underground breeders, and it's a dirty business. So I always recommend giving a dog or an animal a second chance. And you want to know something? They are so appreciative. I know Simon looks at me like, dude, you saved my life. And you know what? I look at him and I say, likewise. <laughs> Lo mismo te digo, amigo. Just whatever you do, whatever decision you make, just make sure you are aware of the decision you're making. But if you make the decision to adopt a dog, I can guarantee it will be your BFF, your best friend forever, como decimos en mi país. Why don't we go back now and take a look at a little history? Now, as we said, the dog is a descendant of the wolf. The difference is that, uh, well, one of the main differences, obviously there are many, many breeds, as we said before, the word breed is raza, but one of those is the upturning tail. So wolves, usually their tails go down. And dogs, well, they can, they have this thing where they can, when they wag their tail, stick it up. Now, there are many other differences, including the fangs, los colmillos, but it's obvious, especially when you look at a husky or one of these dogs, I mean, that is a walking wolf, isn't it? And they say that the dog was the first species to be domesticated. It was domesticated by hunter-gatherers. And a hunter-gatherer is somebody who hunts and gathers their food. And this was over 15,000 years ago. Before the development of agriculture, we had dogs, and they were domesticated. According to the research I've done here, they say that the remains, the remains son los restos, of the Bon Obercastle dog is the first undisputed dog uh, because it was buried, enterrado, next to humans. And that was over 36,000 years ago. So dogs have been a part of our lives much longer than we can even imagine. Because I don't know about you guys, but I can't even fathom that distance in time. 15,000, 35,000 years. I can't even imagine 1,000 years. And the word fathom I used before is como comprender o captar. I also wanted to take a look at the most common breeds of dogs. And, well, the most common breeds are... Are you ready for this? Let's see if you guys can guess. Now, this changes from year to year. In fact, this is already outdated because I got the, the statistics from the year 2020. And according to the American Kennel Club... Okay, the American Kennel Club is one of the biggest dog associations in the States, if not the biggest. They say that dogs are the most variable mammal on Earth. Mammal siendo mamífero. They say there are around 450 globally recognized dog breeds. And the top five are, in fifth place, bulldogs. 
No surprise there. These are funny dogs and, well, they've been popular for a few decades now, I would say. Number four, golden retrievers. Oh, what a beautiful animal. What a gorgeous animal. I can understand why people would want a golden retriever. Now, again, if you live in New York City in a small apartment, don't get a golden retriever. They need a lot of room. Do your research. You know, some dogs don't need a lot of room to run. Those are the perfect kind of dogs for a city. But uh, a, a golden retriever or the third one on our list, the German Shepherd. When I see people in the city with these big dogs, I feel really bad for these dogs. A second place, we've got French Bulldogs. So technically, Bulldogs are on our list twice. What a popular dog. And number one, again, these are from 2020, and this list is constantly changing. But in first place, we've got Labrador Retrievers as the most popular dog. And you know the interesting thing? There are new breeds being recognized every year. So who knows what they'll come up with next. And before we get going over here, I wanted to take a look at a couple fun facts. And in the bonus part of the show, we'll look at some more fun facts, as well as personal stories with my dogs when I was growing up. Also, we'll take a look at the most famous dogs ever, both fictional and non-fictional. That and so much more in the bonus part. If you guys want access to the bonus part of the show, or if you want PDFs with the vocabulary from every show every single week, and you can even get classes with me weekly and monthly classes, well, it's all happening over on Patreon. And we've got a wonderful group of people learning and laughing together. We'd love for you to join us and get in on the action. It's happening at patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. Check out our community of awesome individuals. I want to send a shout out to all my patrons and a quick shout out to my super duper students, Mara, Javier, Francisco, Roberto, David, Jose Maria, Mila, Alex, Patricio, Edgar, and Loles. And don't forget about my interstellar students, Paco, Diego, Carmen, and Diana. Keep up the great work, guys. And those of you who still haven't joined us, what are you waiting for? Stop by patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso and learn so much more and have access to all kinds of special offers and I think the most important part is classes with me. Weekly classes and monthly classes. Check it out. It's patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. We talked about dogs and their sense of smell before. But did you know that their sense of smell is a whopping 40 times better than that of a human? 40 times. 40 veces. That is absolutely amazing. So dogs can pick up more smells or more scents than we can possibly imagine. And I guess this is why dogs are often used to sniff people or drugs or money. Or even lately, they've been using sniffer dogs uh, to use to detect medical conditions, which I think is absolutely fascinating that these dogs can not only be therapeutic but they can also help us detect ailments in the future so they are superior beings i mean a lot of times we think about dogs it's just a dog and the way we talk about dogs we think of them as just like these things but well they wouldn't use them for these important jobs if they weren't smart or good at something. So dogs, I know, they get a bad rap sometimes, and there are many expressions that we use referring to dogs. And we'll take a look at those expressions as well in the bonus part of today's show. Now, this next fact is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling es que te revienta la cabeza. Did you know that a dog can be faster than a cheetah? What? Well, I said can be. First of all, listen to the wording. It can be faster than a cheetah. 
Now, we know most dogs can outrun a human, right? Well, what about the greyhound? I'm sure you guys know the greyhound. I think you call it galgo. Well, this is the fastest breed of dog by far. And these speedy dogs can reach a top speed of 72.4 kilometers within seconds of starting to run. Now, you're thinking, but wait a second, Alberto, that doesn't beat a cheetah. Eso no vence a una cheetah, no. Well, how's that work then? Because a cheetah can run almost 112 kilometers per hour. So 72 versus 112, well, obviously the cheetah's going to win. Yeah, but let's put all the factors in. A cheetah can keep that speed for 30 seconds, around 30 seconds. Greyhounds, on the other hand, can easily run at speeds in excess of 56 kilometers, not their top speed, but 56 kilometers for up to 11 kilometers. So, despite the cheetah's head start, a lo mejor al principio le gana, eh, soon enough, that greyhound is going to overtake that cheetah. And going a little bit deeper into what we said before about their intelligence, Dogs are as smart as a whip, as we say in English. And studies have shown that dogs can learn over a hundred words and gestures. Now, what does that mean? Translated into human, that's a two-year-old. Tiene la inteligencia de alguien de dos años. And I've seen that. My, my dog, Simon, he understands the word paseo. He understands the word walk. I mean, I guess it helps when I have his leash in my hand, cuando tengo la correa, but he associates it and he knows the sounds. So they're really smart and that's why they're used, as I said, by uh, authorities, by the military, and they've been used for farming. I mean, again, we use them because they are amazing animals. Now, just some point along the way, we decided to not just use them, but to love them and take care of them and bring them into our homes. And I know many people who sleep with their dogs. But we'll talk more about that in the bonus part. What we're going to do is wrap right here with an expression. And that expression is, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can't teach an old dog new tricks means that somebody who is old or set in their ways is not going to change. And I beg to differ. I say if you want to change, you can learn new tricks. Okay, maybe you won't learn the newest tricks. Sit, stay, roll over. These are some of the tricks that dogs do. And I know sometimes you'll feel like the underdog. Underdog, el menos favorito. But no matter how old we get, I firmly believe that we can continue to evolve. So I'm going to change that expression to you can teach an old dog new tricks because really every dog has its day. And we'll end with that expression. Every dog has its day means a cada santo le llega su día. So keep working like a dog. Ooh, te he metido otra y al final. Keep working like a dog on your English and having fun. That said, I hope you had fun in this episode, and we'll see you in the bonus part of today's FYI.